Tiffany sent in this very nice 3D sculpted bust of a woman. Wouldn't it be fun to try to minimize the parting lines as much as possible, uh, thereby minimizing the cleanup as much as possible? So I said, I don't know why I do this to myself. I do this for you. Well, let's do a glove mold, or at least a semi-glove mold. The big challenge here is that she has a very narrow, slender neck, very graceful, but that means that in a glove mold, the rubber around the neck is gonna have to really stretch to get over the face. So for this sculpture, I thought, let's use a high flex rubber, not the usual economy grade rubber that I use, but a really high stretch, high flex rubber. It's always fun. We'll see what happens. Because I haven't used this rubber before, I thought I better make some tests <laughs> because I don't know how much it stretches, how far it can stretch before it tears, how strong it is. I don't know anything about it. So what I did was I real quick, 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 like made up a little clay head which kind of mimics the shape of her head. So that's exactly what I want to test is whether or not I can stretch the rubber out around this head enough to make a simple glove mold. In order to do all that, I just need to get out my handy dandy waxer and I'm just going to drop some sticky wax down into the bottom. Okay, that's all you need. Drop it in nice and centered. All right, let's go mix up some rubber and we'll get this thing poured. 3D printing resins are notorious for causing cure inhibition in rubber. So we just put a little dollop on the bottom of this girl and that will be sufficient. If it, that doesn't cure, <laughs> we have a problem because we won't be able to use this rubber. But if it cures up fine, we are good to go. It's been 24 hours. Let's see how our rubber's doing. Uh, this might not be good, kids. This rubber does not look like it cured. Did it cure? Is it just such a thin little amount? I, I Think it cured? It's a little soft and gummy, but let's look at it compared to down here. See, now if I'm looking down here on the table, I'm getting the same soft and gummy out of this thin little rubber. So we're gonna call that a, uh, a successful test that didn't really work. Didn't tell us exactly, I would like to, for that to have just peeled right off, but it didn't. All right, so that's that. Now, this. Let's see how stretchy this rubber is. Okay, the stretch elongation is quite substantial, as you can see. I am pulling hard on that, but it's thick in here. It seems very unlikely that I can pull it over the head because it's so thick on the sides. So now the experiment is, is how little can we cut this rubber and get it to come off? Cuts like butter, just gonna cut it down to where the chin is. Oh yeah, look at that, look at that. Look at that. Wow, now that peeled right off of there, boy. That peeled right off of there. That gives me a fair amount of confidence that I can proceed with this mold the way I plan to do it. We wanna make a glove mold, and that means it's going to be a very tightly fitting, thin-walled mold all around this piece. Because we want this mold to fit like a glove, <laughs> it literally is a glove mold, we're gonna first build the mold cavity out of clay. I don't wanna put clay on this sculpture. It would mess it up, especially in the texture of the hair. So let's condomize this girl with aluminum foil. And I want this foil to wrap around her nice and tight. And I don't know if I can get it to stick on. It doesn't look like it wants to stick on. Let's just sticky wax this aluminum foil onto this girl and see if it works. Putting a blob of sticky wax just wherever I need it. The great thing about foil, of course, is it conforms super nicely to the forms. As you can see, I think we can get this to really fit. And you can see how tight I'm getting this to fit. Well, that would have been hard pressed to work out better than it did. It just came out perfect. Now we can cover the foil in a blanket of clay. Those two sticks you see are cut to the thickness that I want the rubber of the mold to be. Remember, I want to make a thin, flexible mold. By using those sticks as a guide, I can roll out slabs of clay that are the perfect size. And by making sure that the clay is the correct thickness, you make sure that the rubber in the mold will have a consistent wall thickness. And then we can use all these slabs to build up the mold. 
You just go around and wrap the clay slabs all around the model. And as you can see, that assures that you're getting a very consistent wall thickness. That's the whole idea with this process. It gives you really good control over the shape of the rubber blanket. The clay work does not have to be a masterpiece. It's only a blanket mold. So it's, it's never going to show. It's never going to be seen by the public. So I'll just go through, finish all this up, and now it's looking good. I spared you guys the fun of watching me finish this clay work. This is the parting line, this dam, and on it I just used wax rods, half round rods laid on there. Those are going to provide the key, which is going to lock the two sides of the mold together. Mixed up a nice batch of res. This is Trowel on 60 from Silpac. Now I want to paint down onto this base down here because that base is going to help us realign the mold halves when we go to pour this rubber. This shell is going to do two jobs. One, it's going to create the mold, the form for the rubber, and two, it's going to hold the rubber blanket, the, the rubber glove in this case, because we are making a glove mold. Okay, got that side. Let's do this side. Same way. All right, that is looking pretty good. Just keep goobering our way around. Good, looks beautiful. I think that's all we're gonna need. We are done. It's a new day and this shell is rock hard just the way we like it. You'll see that I put two screws in through the shell and into the base and those are locator pins. Those make sure that when I reassemble this whole thing to pour the rubber, that this shell is gonna go perfectly back into position. Have my clay tools handy. Job at hand is to pull this dam off the backside. You'll see that I took pains not to seal it up. So with any luck at all, this stuff will hopefully come off without too much work. Oh, clay ups, all you people out there who just love your clay up molds. Not me, they are not my faves. I do them, as you know but they are not my favorites. Clay up is labor intensive, time intensive, requires many, many, many more steps. And uh, yeah, there's nothing good about them, <laughs> to be honest. Don't like them, but I do them. Just part of the fun. This clay is really wanting to stick to this resin. Uh, I expected these wax channels to pop right out and they're not. They're sticking pretty good to the resin. You've got petroleum-based resin, you've got petroleum-based wax, you've got petroleum-based clay, and that means that they can all kind of want to stick together. So really, you just, you just have to finesse it and clean it up by hand. There's no other option. And I'll just clean it all out, come through with paint thinner, make it nice and perfect, and we're ready to go. I got the backside of the mold all cleaned up, and I also liberally coated the parting line in beeswax. When we pour the mold, we need a way for the rubber to be able to get into the cavity. I'm building this pour spout, and basically what it's going to allow me to do is pour the rubber from the top right here, and it'll just fall all the way to the bottom, rise to the top, and then this opening, this, this thing right here, is going to be both a pour spout and a vent, because I'm going to only pour the rubber in this side. It's going to rise. It's going to vent right out the top. All right, let's see if we have enough material to cover this. If not, we'll mix up more. One thing good about trowel on is you can always add, build it up in layers. Works fine to do that. You can be conservative that way and not bother to try to mix it all in one pot. Let's see how we do. All right, we got this piece all buttered up. Nice. Yep, it's all ready. It's nice and hard. It's ready to go. Let's pull the screws out. We're going to take it apart. And all those screws are gonna do is relocate this when we put it back together. So let's see if there's even the slightest possibility that this thing is gonna come apart. So I made up some wedges and I made up a couple different kinds, little wedges to get started with, break it apart, kind of get it going. And you just work your way around. I wonder if it was a Homo sapiens or a Neanderthal that invented wedges.
the wedges can only go in so deep because there's a model inside of this. There's a clay blanket around it, but there's a model in here. Now we can use the heavier, thicker wedges if we can get them in there. That takes out the smaller wedges. And we can break out the big levers downward. Not yet, but the wedges have done their job, or helped to do their job. There we go. I think it's going to come just fine. That's interesting. Very interesting. So it came off the foil very, very, very nicely. See how that foil did its job? That foil did its job. Here's a really interesting thing. Look at the bottom of this mold right here. See that? See how clean that is? See how not clean that is? And what happened here was this resin stuck to this base and pulled the laminate off. So it stuck to the bottom. No worries, we'll clean it up. But you know what the difference is? This is why I love beeswax. Beeswax is the love of my life. For an experiment, I did the front half here in Vaseline. I covered it, coated it liberally in Vaseline, and the back side I coated in beeswax. And of course, goes without saying, the beeswax side came out perfectly clean, and the Vaseline side came out a big mess that I have to clean up. The reason that the resin stuck to the, stuck to the base, even though it was well lubricated with Vaseline, is that Vaseline is a petroleum product. It's petroleum jelly. And this resin is a petroleum product. They're the same kind of class of materials. So naturally, if there's going to be a bond, it's likely to be among like by like, like with like materials. Whereas beeswax, a whole completely different chemistry. And as I like to say, <laughs> beeswax sticks to everything and nothing sticks to beeswax. It's probably, the, besides rubber and resin, beeswax is the most important tool a mold maker can use because it's the most versatile, it's the easiest, and all the time I get comments for testing, oh, can I use something else? It's like, what, what are you terrified of bees? What's going on with you people? Use the beeswax, this is the greatest stuff in the world. The exact same thing is true of the clay. This is an oil-based clay, and it is an oil-based resin. Consequently, it's happy to stick to itself. So we'll have to peel out all the clay out of the mold which I will do, go through and just peel that all out. I'm gonna clean it up with paint thinner. Paint thinner is another petroleum product that is a solvent for petroleum products. So we'll put that aside. But what I wanna look at is our girl here and make sure that she survived the ordeal, at least the ordeal of being wrapped in clay. Our aluminum foil condom did its job beautifully. She should be pristine. And she is. Okay, it's time to make the mold for this girl. And to start out, we're going to pre-paint. So what I want to do is make sure that I get rubber into all the areas where I need it. And these deep wells in these eyes could be a real problem spot. So let's begin by flowing some rubber in there. Again, I just put in a drop on one side. And I just want to let that rubber drop in there to the bottom of those wells and flow around and fill it. Now what we want to do is pre-fill the hair. The hair is a real problem area on this girl. So let's, 
And I did de-air this rubber in the vacuum chamber, so there's no bubbles in it. And I just wanna make sure that I push the rubber into that hair, because that hair is gonna be a real problem. These braids of hair had a lot of undercuts and gaps, and I had to go through and spend a decent amount of time fill in gaps and, and undercuts in the hair. Because if you have those things, if you have gaps between parts, like the braids of the hair were not attached to the skull, so there was a gap underneath it, well, the rubber gets trapped in there and you're done. It's gonna tear out in the mold. So I had to go in through and fill all that stuff up. And if you don't do that, you will absolutely have problems. There's no guarantee that this mold case would not leak. In fact, it would be extremely likely to, to leak. We don't want that. So as a gasket material, you use the same material that you're, that you're going to use to make the mold. And then it all becomes one thing. No problems. That's one of the handiest tricks I know, is to gasket your mold cases with the same rubber that you're going to pour the mold in. Get our girl in place here. And I believe that what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the back side on first. Like this, slide it into place. These locator holes are crucial because they tell us where the thing goes. It should align it perfectly with the model. And that way, theoretically, the space around her mat perfectly matches the rubber blanket that we designed. See how this goes together. Let's see how this all is gonna go together. Everything goes according to plan. That should find that hole. And it did, found that hole. And this one should find this hole. That looks tight to the base now. Let's see if we can hold this thing together with some binder clips. Wow, that looks pretty tight all the way around. Very good, we'll let that rubber cure up. And then it's time to pour the main body of the mold. I built a funnel, very simple, out of box cardboard. A really very Fred Flintstone, but also very effective. And I sealed it to the case, just using good old oil clay. So I know that we're just not gonna have any leaks at all. The great advantage of this funnel is I can just dump it. Just dump and just fill it as fast as I can fill it. And that funnel is gonna cause that rubber to flow perfectly, exactly how I want it to flow down into the mold. Of course, I de-aired the rubber in the vacuum chamber. It goes without saying. I have absolutely no idea how many cups it's gonna to take to fill this thing. So I'm just gonna keep pouring it in till I fill it. Not seeing any leaks, looking good. This mold has cured overnight. Let's pull it apart. What fun, what fun. Let's see what we got. Let me get this clamp off of here. Let's take the whole thing apart. There we go. Take you apart, you apart, and then let's get the funnel off. Should just come right off. Let's cut this at the top here. Cut this free. That. Nice, did its job. <laughs> I love this thing. Very high tech, but extremely effective. As you saw, funnels just make it so much faster and so much easier to pour the rubber. Love them. Let's see if we're gonna be able to pull this thing apart. Break out the old drill. That should free that. Let's see how hard this mold is gonna to wanna to fight us. This could be one of the battles of the century or it could come, up, come apart pretty easy. Let's break out the old wedgies and get them started. It's funny how something as ancient as wedge technology is just as relevant today as it ever was just as helpful. See how that's opening that gap up? 
This works like a champ. And here's a nice two-part partying line. Notice what a mess it is, and this is why I hate two-part partying lines, but it doesn't matter because this is a mold. This is not a casting. So I, got, I don't have to ever clean up this parting line, just cut the flash off, no big deal. Oh, beeswax, once again, you have worked your magic. Once again, you have worked your magic, and the result is, it's just coming right off. There you go, just pops right off. Okay, now, we got this weirdness here, all this, I don't like this. This had one purpose and one purpose only, and that was to flow the rubber to the bottom so that it would rise up. This is a glove mold, and we don't need these pieces. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna come in, and just as neat as you please, we're gonna pull that rubber off of there. You don't need it, it doesn't have to be there. It's not really hurting anything, but we want this mold to be able to flex maximally. And so to get that to happen, we wanna make sure that there isn't any rubber in the way. Just trimming off that extra rubber. All that rubber was, was a pouring spout. Pop this off the base, easy enough, came right off. You can see our sculpture down in there. And now comes the fun part. See if we can liberate this piece easily or if it's gonna put up a big bloody battle. Let's see what, what's gonna happen here. This has a high modulus of elongation, but is it high enough to come around this chin? That's a good question. We just won't know until we know. Yeah, I might have to. It's like I might have to. Maybe asking too much to go over this. In which case, I'm going to cut it up the back because obviously, that makes the most sense. I was prepared for this. I thought that maybe that we would have to do a little bit of cutting. So that's all right. Let's, let's, I wanna cut some jaggies so we get some nice interlocks. And I wanna cut my interlocks like that. As I get to the body, I wanna cut nice and straight. Then I wanna cut interlocks straight at the body, interlock. These interlocks are important because they're what's gonna help the mold come back together. So it's nice and straight at the body. And as I come away, interlocks. Get some nice mountains there. Now I'm into the hair. So now I wanna find out if I have enough stretch to come over this. I should now have enough stretch. Yeah, I think I do. I think I do have enough stretch. I'm also fighting the fact that it's stuck to the model. It will, so it's not just that it won't stretch, it's also that it's sticking. She comes. There she comes. Oh, did we tear a little in the eye? Yeah, we're, we're definitely Going slow in the hair, because there are a lot of interlocks. I thought I got them all, and I didn't get every one of them. So I left a couple little pieces behind where there was, it was just too deep. This is why you go through and you try to fill in all the areas. I went through and I waxed and filled in, but even so, I didn't get them all. I didn't get this one here, so I left a little piece of them all behind. And I left a little piece of mold behind here where it went underneath. But the sad part is we left a little piece of rubber in the eye. It got caught right deep in that eye. And it was enough, it's, it's, it went, there's enough undercut in that eye that this piece of mold tore out. And that is just about the worst place you can have a mold flaw. Well, that's just the way it goes. Sometimes you just get flaws in your molds and therefore you get flaws in your castings. We'll look into that next week when we cast this girl. If you like this video, hit that like button. It really helps the channel. I hope you had a good time. Thanks for watching. I will see you next week.